It's Wednesday, and it's a new year, and what better time to talk about one of my favorite filmmakers, Fredo and Ray. Um, I've talked about Evil Tunes on here and other things, and I had him out uh, from Florida for the other show, um, and we, we talked about um, uh, you know his movies there, and, and we had him out at the drive-in at the Mahoning for VHS Fest, and today we are talking about Scalps. Um, not one of his favorite movies. Uh, I learned that from talking to him. Uh, it's kind of funny that anytime anybody brings this movie up to him and says that they like it, he thinks that they're lying. Uh, so this is the long out of print 20th anniversary uh, uh, retro media release of it. Um, the story behind this movie is far more interesting than the movie itself. Uh, I, I'm, I'm still... This is this is a harder movie for me uh, when it comes to his filmography because it is definitely the most mean spirited of all the movies that Fredo and Ray made. Um, you could tell that this was like he's uncomfortable talking about it, um, and it shows in everything that he made after that, which which took a bit more, especially when it comes to horror, took a bit more of a bubblegum approach uh, that you would see. Um, Others like David Dakota kind of follow along with, or even Jim Wynorski follow along with. Uh, I think the violence and the rape and stuff like that kind of turned him off. And then the deal, the, the distribution company uh, kind of made him go like, well, I don't want to make a movie like that anymore. Um, uh, this movie is, uh, is about a, a group of college students uh, who go out into the desert to dig uh, for uh, Native American artifacts at what is essentially a Indian burial ground. And uh, Kirk Allen, who was the first on-screen live-action Superman, is in it as their, uh, their professor. And um, what's the woman's name? She was in Mark of the Vampire. Uh, trying to find her name on here. Well, the, the actress who was in it, who was in uh, Mark of the Vampire, played Lugosi's daughter. She's the secretary. And, uh, she's like, hey, you guys better not be grave robbing. And he's like, what? No, not us. Wink. And then he goes to his students and he's like, totally don't grave rob. Wink. And then they go and grave rob. <laughs> Wink. <laughs> uh, oh, they, um, um, you got, um, Forrest J. Ackerman, Fari Ackerman, uh, wandering around as another professor just carrying a book about monsters. Um, he was the, you know, he was the man behind Famous Monsters Magazine, uh, and just appeared in a lot of stuff at that time. You could tell that Wood was able to get, like, because I think Aldo Ray was also supposed to be in the movie and turn it down. Um, Ed Wood cast a lot of, uh, actors who, um, you know, he was a fan of growing up, people from the serials and B-movies and stuff. He was able to work a lot with David Carradine after that. Um, and this was early on in his career still, uh, you know, the alien dead came before this one, which I think is a more, his first real movie was, it's a little bit more of a more competent film. This one is kind of undone a little bit, uh, by the editing, which unfortunately was 21st century releasing. Uh, they didn't know that the company was as deep in the hole financially as they were. So the movie cost like $15,000 to make and wound up losing like 30 something before it even came out. Um, cause his original Woods, uh, brother apparently had the idea while on a bus going home from work and Ed Wood wrote it and, um, and it's, uh, you know, the, the scenes that come really early in this edit wind up coming, uh, are the, yeah, the scenes that come early in the movie were supposed to come later in the movie. Um, it was supposed to kind of like slowly bring you into the supernatural and all that. But this, the company who made it just kind of like uh, 21st Century just put all that shit up, up front, right on Front Street. So you got like, uh, you got a shot of like the tiger or the lion head or whatever, which is a cool effect when shown quickly. Um, or like, you know, the uh, a random ass dude who goes into a cave and just so happens like right outside the cave. He doesn't go into the cave because lighting would be hard. Uh, picks up a rock that possesses him because there's a flash of a head on screen so that he slashes his own throat then some of our main characters they show them being scalped in the very very beginning before we even meet them um in the in the movie uh which is kind of funny they did the same thing in swamp zombies 2 the editor uh jenna uh put like some of the stuff that comes later in the movie of characters fates in the opening credit sequence so you're just like 
oh, okay, well, we could just say it's a scouts reference and go from there, you know. Uh, our total not grave robbers uh, go out in a in a in a, uh, in a um, station wagon, and uh, I know that they're trying to echo something like the Texas Chainsaw Massacre with its look, with its kind of dried out, sun bleached kind of vibe to it. Um, you know, aside from the 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 poor editing and the idea and the fact that certain scenes were were cut out uh, so that it could fit onto a double feature with the Slayer. Um, so the, the version that we have here is a composition of VHS elements and 35 millimeter negatives. Uh, so the, the, the vast difference in quality is very evident, um, as is the day for night, night for day style shooting. So sometimes our characters will be in broad daylight. Sometimes they'll be in a black of abyss. Sometimes they'll be in a blue haze, um, in the course of one scene, you know? Uh, so that kind of stuff takes you a little bit out of the movie, um, you know, and, and, you know, you have your, your, your basic, uh, one person's like, you know, the, the ground is alive with evil. Don't dig, don't, don't dig up the bones. And that's, that's DJ. And they're all like, shut up, DJ. We're going to, we're going to dig up these treasures. And, uh, all of a sudden the bowls that they, they dug up start being filled with blood out of nowhere. And they're like, this is fine. Um, you know, there, there was these, the, the Native American guy they meet at the general store is like, uh, yeah, the, the settlers found out about the black trees and they said, stay away from there. So they go out and they see black trees and they're like, oh, let's go to there. And the black trees, uh, Fred said was kind of just a happy accident. Um, apparently there was a fire before that and he saw them while they were out scouting and thought they looked cool. So he put them in the movie. So happy accidents. Um, you know, you got some interesting makeup in it. Uh, when the one guy, um, you know, like I said, the, the lion head or whatever, you know, it looks cool enough when you see it in, in short spurts. The, uh, the full scalps Native American demon guy, um, looks cool in certain scenes, um, when they're not just being dropped in willy nilly, like somebody took a bunch of pieces of the movie and just like LeBron James did up into the air. Um, cause you just have these shots periodically where I guess the editor was just like, oh, we haven't, you know, we haven't, we're spending too much time getting to know these characters. We better just have a random shot of a guy in a Native American demon mask running towards the camera. Um, you know, so it's stuff like that that definitely undercuts the movie, and I can definitely see why that is a reason that Fred is not a fan of this movie. Um, I, I like the, the rhythmic pounding score. Um, I like the general conceit of the concept of it. Obviously now, you know, it's got scalping in it too. You know, it's got a pretty cool, a couple cool scalping scenes in it. Um, you know, we live in a more PC world, so maybe this movie doesn't, wouldn't fly now. But if you look at it as exploitation, um, you know, it says one of the most censored movies of all time. I suppose. Uh, you know, but there is, you know, there's a, there's a really uncomfortable rape scene in it, as all rape scenes in movies should be. Um, you know, I think Fred got a lot better after this and just figuring out ways to put boobs in that aren't like, kind of make you feel gross, you know, um, there's some good gore in it that, but once the story kind of gets the very simple setup, uh, once it kind of gets to where it's going and you have your, your meeting with the native American man in the, in the uh, general store, gives you all the exposition you need to kind of go forward. Um, it all, things just kind of happen, you know, people go looking for people, uh, you know, uh, people don't, you don't know if people are at nighttime or daytime or, or, you know, if the sun has completely disappeared and been replaced by a blue orb in the sky. Uh, you know, these random insert shots, um, what is the lion supposed to be? Uh, who, you know, who's the skeleton that's out there that they see that they think is like, they got like picked apart by a buzzard. They're like, that's not a buzzard. That's an eagle. It's like, well, that's a full ass dead human man. Like, <laughs> Um, not that it's, it's not a hard story to follow. It's just that there's not really much of a story. Um, it's, it's very early into Fred's, uh, cat and mouse style storytelling where it's like, okay, we're going to put people in a place and there's a thing. And then that group of people is going to run from that thing until the credits start. Um, and that's why I love his movies. Cause that's, I, I love writing that exact same kind of way. You know, it, you get all the exposition out of the way early, like evil dead, you know, uh, it's like, get it all out of the way. And then from there, it's just, wee, you know, 
Um, they, they, it promises a sequel at the end. Uh, uh, JD's Revenge, Scalps 2, that never happened. Um, I think at one point Dustin Ferguson tried to make a sequel and he shot some footage for it. And I think there was like a 2004 like unofficial sequel. Um, you know, uh, the, the, the general idea I think could really, really work for a sequel or for a remake, um, you know, of, of disturbing the past and, and, uh, you know, the, the, the ghosts of the past are never really buried. They're always there to, uh, remind us of terrible things that we did and, and, uh, to respect other people's culture and all that kind of stuff. Um, but you know, the one thing I will give 21st century, uh, you know, as much as they botched the edit and the release of this movie, the artwork is incredible. I have the poster. Um, and when Fred, we had him out here, I had him sign it for me. Um, yeah, I don't know. Not, not my favorite of all of his movies. Um, you know, I, I would definitely put this at the bottom of my enjoyment factor when it comes to his movies, but you know, it's still, it, it delivers on what it promises. It's an exploitation movie, uh, in the wake of the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Um, you know, and, and it's got gore in it. It's got scalping in it, which you asked for, you know, that from the title, it's got, nudity it's got feathered hair it's it's got Forrest J Hackerman you know it's it's got all those things so if you're a Fred Olin Ray completionist I would and you have not seen this yet I would say to to give it a look um you know it's it's interesting it's definitely one of those uh strange like movies that'll just kind of wash over you um but it still will leave a little bit of an impact you'll still remember things from it um, my introduction to this movie was actually the trailer, uh, was that I, I went to a, a, um, a film night, uh, when I was in college and they played the trailer and they cut up the one character where she's like, in one scene, she's like, you know, it's the, the ground's evil. Don't disturb the ground. And like, she had like approaches three different people, uh, all in one scene, but the way they cut it up in the trailer, it just looks like this random character just comes running out at people and saying this thing. And then they like push her down and stuff. Um, so that made me laugh, and then I liked the very last shot, uh, spoiler alert, of JD's, uh, or DJ's possessed, and she's kind of tapping the sticks together, and, and there's a really cool close-up of her, um, and the stippling effect that they did on the makeup is actually really well done, um, so, yeah, I don't know, if, if, you know, if you want to see the first ever Superman, uh, playing a, like a, a detect or a, a professor, explorer that looks like the dad and ega um uh you know and and i don't know i i i again it's not a great movie but all of his movies bring me some sort of joy because they're all integral and part of of making me want to make b movies and and it, it is also fun to watch people come up to him and tell him how much they love his movies and in person to watch it and him be like no, why? Why do you like that? And it's like, because it's fun. You know, it's, 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 this is the stuff that would be on late night TV when you were a little kid, or this is the stuff that you would get from the video store based on just the, the box art or whatever, or, uh, or go see a double feature of or something. And it, 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 you know, it's, it gives you that dopamine hit that you need. Um, and that's why I have all these movie posters framed all behind me and stuff like that. It's like, are all of these like works of art? Are they fucking Fellini and, and all that? No, but you know, but they're special and they all have a, a place and a spot in your heart. And, and I'm very much in that, like, you know, one man's trash is another man's treasure. And I can find something out of this movie or any, any, you know, B movie, Z movie that I can, that I can appreciate and love. And, and especially, uh, getting to talk to the dude and find out about the conditions of the making of this kind of movie makes you appreciate it even more because it is, you know, it, it's the idea that art through adversity, you know, you might not call scalps art, but <clears throat> he got it done, you know, and, and as much as the studio tried to fuck it over, the distribution tried to fuck it over and, it, you know, they had $15,000 to make it and they're out there trying and they don't have the lighting and they don't have whatever it's like, but they still got it made and it still exists all these years later and new people are going to discover it maybe through my video. I don't know. Um, and, uh, there's something special about that. We were talking, I was 
did the Twilight Zone uh, marathon review and how it got canceled because things like the Beverly Hillbillies were more important. And it's just like, okay, but the Twilight Zone is going to last forever. New people are going to always find the Twilight Zone. Beverly Hillbillies, eh, not so much. You know, you'll have these like A24 style, uh, you know, high concept, highbrow horror movies that'll just kind of get lost in the mix. But you're going to be scrolling through fucking Tubi or something in the middle of the night and come across scalps and see that artwork and go, I'll give this a couple minutes, you know, and then you'll see Forrest J. Ackerman. And if you know who that is, you're going to be like, oh, fuck, Forrest J. Ackerman's in this movie, you know. Um, so stuff like that is is just another reason to just fall in love with with B-movies and, and just give them a chance and, and just seeing if you take something from it. Even if it's like something that's like fucking god-awful, terrible, you could sit down with your friends and, and mystery science theater the shit out of it, you know. Um, and that's another reason, like, growing up falling in love with these movies is sitting down and watching, um, you know, uh, Sleepaway Camp 2 with my friends at a sleepover or something like that, and, and just joking, talking over it and joking and stuff like that, and, uh, there's so many movies now that I can't see, even as an adult, without thinking about a joke that a friend made in, like, fifth grade, you know, um, and that, that kind of shit is just another reason why all this stuff is so vital to to who i am and and Fredo and ray movies are so vital to who i am and 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 scalps is definitely you know it's it's definitely one to check out um if you're a fan of this kind of movie and that's all i got for this wednesday it's a shorter review i just watched this one um today on my day off and i'm just trying to stay ahead of the schedule uh but i was like what could i what haven't i talked about in a while i know i haven't talked about a good Fredo and ray movie in a while and there's more to do but this is the one today that i wanted to sit down and watch and um there we are so tell me below uh what is your favorite what's the you know what's your favorite like b movie that like other people would go Ooh, really you know or your favorite fred on ray movie or just anything any interaction whatsoever down below tell me what you had for lunch today <laughs> i need to plan these out better